And we are back. We're still following up and tracing uh, the beat of the elections. And uh, we have with us uh, from the Ministry of Interior, our correspondent uh, over there, uh, Dina Hwaidak. Dina, tell us more about uh, how smoothly is the electoral process going on and how are we uh, reporting? What, are there any sorts of violations that the Interior Ministry has reported up to the present moment? Yes, Dina. Dina. Hello, Tareed. Good evening. Good evening to you. How, how smooth is the electoral process going on up till the present moment? Yeah, we're still at Ministry of Interior, joined uh, by uh, Major Ahmad Haider from the International Relations uh, Department uh, from the Ministry of Interior. And we're going to know from him now what are the latest updates on ground. Uh, good evening. Sir. Good evening. Uh, what are the latest updates? Uh, actually, uh, there is still uh, we, we are witnessing uh, uh, uneventful uh, day, and uh, the voting process is still characterized by the calmness and uh, well organization, and uh, there is nothing to be reported about uh, prominent uh, events uh, took place. Uh, and back to your question, Tagreed, uh, earlier about um, the cooperation between citizens and the Ministry of Interior or the police uh, forces in reporting any violations. Uh, Major Ahmed Haider going to answer this question. Sure. Major Ahmed, uh, what about the cooperation between the citizens and police forces in reporting any violations? Uh, actually, uh, actually, I'd like to emphasize again that uh, the role of uh, the police forces is confined to provide security. So apart from the situations uh, uh, that may endanger the life of those who are present in the polling stations or around the polling stations, uh, the security forces uh, act only upon uh, the, uh, the request of the judges that is supervising the electoral process. So. Uh, even if uh, the people would like to report uh, something concerning uh, administrative uh, uh, violations, uh, they may re re be referred to the, uh, the, the judge that is the representative of the electoral uh, committee. And uh, the, upon the request of the judge, we uh, respond. But, but for the cases, as I told you, that may endanger the life of uh, people, the, directly the, the, the forces can interfere. Uh, so can you please remind us again in the situations of emergency uh, about the uh, specialized rooms for this? Uh, the sp specialized uh, uh, joints. Uh, we have we have groups uh, actually uh, of uh, well-trained uh, police officers and personnel uh, that uh, interfere and respond for any kind of, of violations uh, firmly uh, and in the framework of uh, uh, the law. Uh, thank you, Major Ahmed. Uh, uh, be back to Thank you very much, uh, Dina Hwaidak, uh, uh, our correspondent at the Ministry of Interior. Uh, also, special thanks go to Major uh, Ahmed Haider uh, for his contribution, uh, uh, updating us with uh, the latest from uh, the Ministry uh, of Interior reporting. Well, earlier, as we all know, the reminder, the polling stations had already uh, opened for the second day in Cairo and 12 other governorates for the second stage of the parliamentary elections. Voting had already started at 9 a.m. Cairo local time and uh, is expected to close at 9 p.m. Uh, Monday is considered to be the second and the final day of the voting with the runoff round is expected uh, to be between uh, November 30th and the 2nd of uh, December. Uh, voting abroad has already concluded Sunday night. A number of 222 individual seats are contested by hundreds of candidates in the second round. For party lists, there is a total of uh, 60 seats in two constituencies in Cairo and also uh, in the Nile Delta. A total of 160,000 army personnel uh, were deployed in order to secure uh, the polling stations in 13 governorates in which the second stage of uh, the parliamentary elections uh, take uh, place. Uh, we earlier uh, talked to our uh, reporters and our correspondents in the different constituencies. Lately, to Dina Hwaida, who updated us from the Ministry of Interior. We also uh, uh, talked uh, earlier to uh, Riham Morsi, to Linda Abdel Latif, and, uh, and more from Basma Taha at Sayyida. Uh, Zainab uh, constituency. Our reporter said that the turnout is considered to be higher actually uh, at this stage than the previous stage. They also uh, mentioned quite an interesting uh, factor, the participation on behalf of the uh, elderly in the electoral process, how they were really keen 
uh, to share in determining Egypt's future. Uh, they also talked about uh, the human side uh, of the story, uh, of how uh, judges were really keen to help uh, the voters, even the elderly who were not able uh, to uh, uh, cast their, 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 their votes. They usually even they went down to them uh, and helped them uh, actually to cast their ballot. Uh, so a great sense uh, of awareness uh, on behalf of Egyptians in that story. And we have with us uh, from Shubra constituency, our correspondent, Riham Mursi. Uh, Riham, good evening. And uh, uh, tell us more about uh, how the story is proceeding. Is everything uh, going on smooth at Shubra constituency? Uh, yes, good evening to you, Tagrid. Uh, the electoral process is going much better than it was yesterday. The number of voters coming in is much higher than it was uh, previously in uh, yesterday as well. We saw early in the morning a lot of young people coming in uh, to vote in the early hours, and then uh, throughout the afternoon, more of the elderly coming in to vote. But now, uh, after the short break that the polling stations took from around 2.30 to about uh, 3.30, uh, we saw lines and queues of people coming in to vote in bigger numbers. Uh, they're very enthusiastic and as expected that usually on the last day and especially on the last few hours of voting, uh, we start to see a bigger flow of people uh, coming in to vote. But uh, I personally noticed today an irregularity that was taking place here in the uh, school where one of the candidates was here in the school with his uh, own monitors sitting in the school's vicinity, which is considered the polling station's vicinity, uh, holding... Was, uh, was this referred uh, to the higher electoral commission, Rehan? How, how yes, was it I, I reported this right away mm. to the uh, army uh, officials here, one of the heads of the uh, security for the army. He immediately took action, removed them from the vicinity of the school, and filed a report about it. And uh, these observers were not uh, allowed back in. They sent in other observers uh, instead of them. Right. Uh, mentioning queues of people, that's quite interesting to see people quite enthusiastic for the second and the final day before it, it wraps up. But also what was quite interesting, you were mentioning the young, which, which is good today to see them participating. Oh. I'm sorry, uh, that last yeah. part, I didn't quite catch uh, we're, it. We're talking about the young also participating. That was quite interesting, what you're saying, that the young were also there. How did they talk about uh, uh, Egypt's future, the, the, the parliament, their expectations? Uh, and what were the demands of the youth from the upcoming parliament? Uh, yes, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, quite interesting here. A lot of the young people are coming in to vote. Uh, um, I'm not sure if this is happening everywhere else in the districts of Cairo. But here in Shubra, the, the young people are very keen on voting and putting in their votes, especially those of the age 18, because it's for the first time they're allowed to vote uh, at this age. Mm -hmm. So they're very excited to show uh, that uh, they have voting power and have a say in what's happening. If you talk to anyone, not just the young people, uh, talk to them about why they're here to vote, they're not specifically asking for, for personal needs or demands, but rather they want a better Egypt, a better economy, a, a better future for everyone, especially the young people, obviously, who have uh, a lot to look forward for. Right. Uh, Riham, your expectations for uh, uh, the rest of the day, and also uh, we're expecting a feedback from you uh, at the time where the ballot counting is going to start. So uh, how, how are the expectations? Are we expecting the turnout to be higher uh, as the day uh, comes to an end? I'm sorry, I really have a big problem with uh, the sound. I can't really hear you properly. Uh, uh, we're talking about uh, the expectations for uh, the rest of the day and uh, we're expecting a feed from you uh, when uh, the ballot counting would start, Riham. So, uh, any expectations for, for the turnout throughout the rest of the day? I, I didn't really gather the question, but from what I heard, I think you're talking about uh, the numbers of people coming in to vote, if, if that's correct. Yes. Yes, dear. Uh, yes. The turnout, the, the turnout yesterday was uh, um, a, little, uh, yeah, a little average to uh, medium, I suppose that you would call it medium. The number of votes that uh, got in yesterday was about 15 to 18 percent, depending on uh, the polling stations that you went to. But today we're expected to see bigger numbers of people because, uh, as you know, uh, Egyptians, generally speaking, tend to go uh, on the final hours and they'd rather do uh, the voting process itself. Uh, in the last minute, if you will, but uh, um, when I was speaking earlier with one of the international observers, he, he said it should be something around 30 to 35 percent, maybe, if that's possible. But by the look of the flow today here in Shubra, it looks like it's going to pass that number uh, today. 
Hopefully, Riham, Riham Morsi, our correspondent at Shubra Constituency, thank you so much for uh, your update and your feedback, putting us in uh, uh, live for what is happening at Shubra Constituency. And moving on, uh, the, the, definitely it's going on uh, smoothly at Shubra Constituency. We earlier also took the feed from uh, Sayyida Zainab Constituency, from Mansoura, from, from more uh, than one governorate also participating in the second stage of the elections don't go away you are still uh, keeping on the beat of the elections and following up the story as it unfolds a short break and we'll be back <laughs> the second stage of the parliamentary elections and the feedback from our correspondents uh, in, in those governorates participating and also in, in Cairo. And uh, we are before new trends in the, in the political sphere, taking more uh, an intake on that from um, political analyst Mr. Sharif Riz. Uh, Mr. Riz, good day. Good evening, sir. Uh, hello? Yes, Mr. Riz, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, not very clearly, but... Good evening, sir. We're talking about uh, new trends in the uh, political sphere, uh, your expectations for the composition of the upcoming parliament. How do you see it? Well, it seems that people are not very excited about going. Uh, the same thing they used to, like a few years ago, but still the process has to be completed uh, in a way or the other. Um, well, I think it's uh, due to the big number of candidates who are not yet politically uh, well known in the Egyptian society. That's why lots of people don't want to go because they don't know them very well. But maybe in a few years, in a few coming years, when they form like a political stand and people are clear who they are, people might be more like motivated to go and vote. But as a, as a beginning of a, of a process of election, I think it's very much okay as a start. I can hardly hear you, uh, uh, sir. Uh, I was talking about the composition of the upcoming parliament, and uh, we are before a parliament that uh, has a number of uh, varying entities. So uh, how do you see the competition between alliances so far? Uh, I, I can't hear you very well. Okay, we'll get back to you, Mr. Sharif Riz. Uh, a political analyst uh, talking to us more on highlighting the electoral process. So uh, we're following up today, Monday, the second and the final day uh, of the voting with the runoff round, which is scheduled between November 30th and the 2nd of uh, December. We know that a number of 222 individual seats 
are contested by hundreds of candidates in the second round, while many questions are there concerning uh, the reorganization of the parties, the new trends in the political sphere, how will the upcoming parliament look like, the composition of the parliament, are we before a parliament that has a number of uh, uh, varying uh, entities, uh, we're talking about, uh, the, our correspondents talked about the sense of political awareness uh, on behalf of the Egyptian citizens who were really keen to participate and also uh, to pinpoint uh, more of their demands from the upcoming parliament and from also the candidates whom they are going to give their voice to. Uh, categories mentioned included uh, the elderly and uh, women, of course, they were dominating the scene earlier yesterday, but uh, uh, we're happy to see also the young today uh, participating. Was glad w uh, on what Riham Mursi was saying concerning queues of people who were seen earlier in the day uh, quite enthusiastic to share. So we're following up uh, the beat here on Nile TV International of the electoral process and uh, a short break and uh, we're going to be back with further uh, voices uh, our correspondents through their eyes more on the beat of the elections coming up shortly <laughs> Following up uh, the beat of the elections, and we have with us uh, over the line uh, Dr. Ibrahim Al Ghazawi, Professor of Law. Uh, Dr. Ghazawi, uh, good day, good evening, sir. Good evening. Well, we're talking about uh, the upcoming parliament and following up the beat of the elections, uh, the composition of a parliament that now has a number of uh, varying entities. Excuse How do you me. see there, there uh, uh, this, this composition? I can't get you. I can't get you. Hello? Yes, doctor. Can you hear Hello? me, sir? Uh, the, the voice is distorted. I can't get you. Okay, we'll get back to Dr. Ghazawi as soon as uh, uh, the line is available. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Ghazawi, can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Dr. Ghazawi, can you hear me, sir? Hello? Yes, hello? Yes? Uh, doctor, how about the composition of the upcoming parliament? Uh, are we before a parliament that has a number of uh, uh, varying entities? How do you see the composition of the upcoming parliament? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't get you well. The voice is distorted. The sound is distorted. Hello? Okay, Dr. Ghazawi, we'll get back to you as soon as uh, the link is uh, available. So, uh, we're before a parliament that has uh, a number of uh, varying entities, a competition uh, between alliances definitely is there. There is a sense of uh, political awareness on behalf of Egyptians to participate in the second day uh, of the parliamentary elections. We've seen different segments participating, the elderly, uh, the youth, uh, women. That, is, that was really quite uh, important throughout the day. Today, Monday, is considered to be the second and the final day of uh, the voting. The runoff uh, round is expected between November the 30th and the 2nd of uh, December. We had earlier witnessed the voting uh, abroad that was concluded uh, earlier on Sunday night. Uh, nearly 222 individual seats are contested by hundreds of candidates in the second round. For uh, the party lists, there is a total of 60 seats in two constituencies, both in Cairo and the Nile Delta. Uh, we've been seeing uh, definitely in the streets, the army and the police are deployed to secure uh, the polling stations in 13 uh, governorates in which the second stage of the parliamentary elections is taking uh, place. And we've been uh, talking to our reporters throughout the Egyptian governorates participating, the 13 governorates uh, participating in the electoral process. As for the uh, Egyptian expats voting, the deputy foreign minister, Ambassador Hamdi Loza, had said uh, earlier that more than 37,000 uh, Egyptian expats had voted in the second phase of the parliamentary elections. The number is representing a 22% increase in the turnout in the first phase. The uh, Egyptians voted on Saturday and Sunday in 139 embassies and consulates and the uh, electoral committee announces uh, results uh, of the vote of the expat. So, uh, the expats. So, we're, we're uh, still following up the beat of the electoral process from more than one 
uh, constituency. We talked to, to our reporters, uh, Bas Mataha, Rihem Morsi, uh, Nermin Abdelrahman, and uh, Linda Abdelatif. Uh, all, all of them have uh, ha already said that there is a higher turnout actually in, in this uh, phase than reported uh, uh, earlier. They were talking about uh, people's sense of awareness that they were really keen to participate and uh, keen to share uh, in the uh, electoral process. What was quite interesting was what Riham Morsi was saying about the young who uh, were quite enthusiastic also to participate earlier in the day. Queues of people were seen uh, in Shubra uh, coming and participating and sharing in the electoral process. In Sayyida Zainab, women were seen participating and the elderly uh, and also judges were seen helping people out uh, to cast their votes. So we're still with you moment by moment, exactly at 6 p.m. Cairo local time, the French transmission will be taking over and we will be uh, updating you uh, uh, in uh, the French language with more concerning the electoral process and the beat of uh, the elections. So uh, a short break and we'll be back to follow up our special coverage here on Nile TV.